Salve Maria! The heralds of the gospel are happy to welcome you, dear viewers, to this first Saturday devotion. Let us now begin with our prayer before meditation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, beloved daughter of the Eternal Father. Hail Mary, admirable mother of God the Son. Hail Mary, faithful spouse of God the Holy Spirit. We place ourselves especially at this moment in your presence, asking your help to obtain graces in union with thee, to do this meditation well, for the greater glory, honor and service of God and for the good of our souls. We offer thee this meditation in reparation for the sins committed against thy immaculate heart and for the conversion of poor sinners. Amen. Today, we shall meditate upon the fifth sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. John the Apostle and Evangelist witnessed the crucifixion and death of our Saviour with his own eyes. And so let us read from the Gospel account of St. John, chapter 19, verses 17 to 30. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic, but the tunic was without seam woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Father Paul O'Sullivan observes that our Lord suffered the most ignominious and cruel death to save us. He could have saved us with one word or with one drop of his precious blood. Why did he submit himself to such outrages, blasphemies and insults? Simply to compel us to love him, to prove to us in the clearest possible way how much he loved us. He died not for all in general, he died for each one of us in particular. He saw you clearly and distinctly and offered every pang of pain, every drop of his precious blood for you. And yet, knowing all this, we look on the crucifix, we look on the representations of the passion and yet feel no love for the God who suffered so much for us. We feel no gratitude. We remain cold, unmoved, unresponsive. Why is it that we do not grasp this great mystery? It is because 
we have not the light of the holy ghost it is not possible to understand this divine proof of love and not love back let us then beg and implore the holy ghost to help us to understand the infinite love of our lord for us in the passion now let us consider some heart wrenching reflections and affections from saint alphonsus maria de liguri about the last moments of the earthly life of our lord behold here we are at the crucifixion at that last torture which brought death to jesus christ here we are at calvary converted in a theater for the display of divine love where a god departs this life in an ocean of sufferings the lord having with great difficulty at length reached the top of the mount alive they violently for the third time tear his clothes from off him sticking as they did to the sores upon his wounded flesh and they throw him down upon the cross the divine lamb stretches himself out upon that bed of torment he reaches forth to the executioners his hands and his feet to be nailed and raising his eyes to heaven he offers up to his eternal father the great sacrifice of his life for the salvation of men after the nailing of one of his hands the nerves shrink so that they had need of brute force and ropes as was revealed by saint bridget to draw the other hand and the feet up to the places where they were to be nailed and this occasion so great attention of the nerves and veins that they broke asunder with a violent convulsion ah my jesus thou by pain of thy pierced hands was willing to pay the penalty due to all the sins of touch that men have committed and by the pain of thy feet thou was willing to pay for all the steps by which we have gone our way to offend thee o oh, my crucified love with these pierced hands give me thy benediction o oh, nail this ungrateful heart of mine to thy feet that so i may no more depart from thee and that this will of mine which has so often rebelled against thee may remain ever steadily fixed in thy love for pity's sake O oh my Jesus never abandon me again at any period of my life and more especially at the hour of my death in those last agonies and struggles with hell do thou assist me and strengthen me to die in thy love Saint Augustine says there is no death more bitter than that of the cross because as Saint Thomas Aquinas observes those who are crucified have their hands and their feet pierced through parts which being entirely composed of nerves muscles and veins are the most sensitive to pain and the very weight of the body itself which is suspended from them causes the pain to be continuous and ever increasing in its intensity up to the moment of death saint alphonsus continues o my soul behold thy lord behold thy life hanging upon that tree behold how on that cross of pain fastened by those cruel nails he finds no place of rest now he leans his weight upon his hands now upon his feet for on what path soever he leans the anguish increases he turns his afflicted head now on one side now on the other if he lets it fall towards his chest the hands by the additional weight are rent the more if he lowers it towards his shoulders the shoulders are pierced with the thorns if he leans it back upon the cross the thorns enter the more deeply into the head ah my jesus what a death of bitterness is this that thou art enduring oh my crucified redeemer i adore thee on this throne of ignominy and pain O oh, blessed obedience which obtained for us the pardon of our sins and what would have become of me o oh, my savior had thou not paid the penalty for me i thank thee o oh, my love and by the merits of this sublime obedience do i pray thee to grant me the grace of obedience in everything 
to the divine will all that i desire paradise for is that i may love thee forever and with all my strength o my jesus how do i behold thee weighed down with sorrow and sadness ah too much reason has thou to think that while thou dost suffer even to die of anguish upon this wood there are yet so few souls that have the heart to love thee oh my god how many hearts are there at the present moment even among those that are consecrated to thee who either love thee not or love thee not enough oh beautiful flame of love thou that didst consume the life of a god upon the cross oh consume me too consume all the disorderly affections which live in my heart and make me live burning and sighing only for that loving lord of mine who for love of me was willing to end his life consumed by torments upon a cross of ignominy o oh, my beloved jesus i wish ever to love thee and thee alone my only wish is to love my love my god my all complimenting what saint alphonsus de ligori said our father and founder plinio correa de oliveira in his way of the cross rightly acknowledged what the consequences of our lord's passion should be for us all of this then was to save to save men to save this man who i am my salvation was purchased at such a price i will spare myself no sacrifice to secure that salvation so precious by the water and the blood that came forth from thy divine side by the wound of thy heart by the sorrows of mary most holy grant me o jesus the strength to detach myself from the persons and things that can separate me from thee today they die nailed to the cross all the friendships all the affections all the ambitions all the delights that have separated me from thee there is a beautiful saying which goes like this every saint has a past and every sinner a future that is if he converts one may add so no matter what the condition of our soul or the state of our life be it as a religious or a lay person let us never despair of god's infinite mercy because as long as we are alive there is hope let us turn for comfort and strength to the words of the most sacred heart of jesus to sister josepha menendez as found in the book the way of divine love concerning the souls of repentant sinners our lord says to sister josepha ah if souls only knew how much i wait for them full of mercy i am the love of loves and i cannot rest except in pardoning i am always waiting with love for souls to come to me come throw yourselves in my arms do not fear i know the depths of souls their passions their attraction to the world and to pleasures it is not sin that wounds my heart most what crushes it is that souls do not want to take refuge in me after having sin yes i crave to pardon and i want my chosen souls to make known to the world how my heart waits for sinners overflowing with love and mercy i would like to make known to souls that i never refuse my graces to them not even when they are loaded with the most grave sins and i do not separate from those whom i love with predilection i keep them all in my heart to give to each one the succor that his state demands i want to make them understand that they should not distance themselves from me just because they are in mortal sin they should not think that there is no longer a cure for them and that they will never more be loved as before no poor souls these are not the feelings of a god who shed all his blood for you you who are sunk in evil and have lived erring and fugitive for some time now because of your crimes if the sins of which you are guilty have hardened and blinded your hearts if to satisfy your passions you have fallen in the worst scandals 
do not let yourselves be seized by despair as long as man has a breath of life he can still have recourse to mercy and beg pardon your god will not permit your soul to be imprisoned in hell on the contrary he desires and with great ardor to draw you near to him in order to pardon you does not a father take more care of a son who is sick than of those who are well so also my heart pours out its compassion and tenderness with more liberality over sinners than over the just give me your love and never distrust mine and above all give me your confidence and do not doubt my mercy it is easy to expect all from my heart let us now end our meditation by turning to the wise and immaculate heart of mary o most blessed virgin my mother i thank you for the insights and inspirations which i received from your divine spouse the holy spirit obtain for me the grace to treasure in my heart the truths upon which i have meditated and to regulate my life according to them and finally do thou obtain for me from thy divine son the true contrition and the pardon of all my sins in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen don't forget to fulfill the other first saturday conditions until next time god bless you and salve maria